shit, yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club, dripping like I'm fresh paint. I can shoot through the facade like an X ray. What's going on, fight fans? It's another great day when you love MMA. Welcome back to Mad Maddie Fight Talk, episode 7. Let's get into it. This past weekend, Triller Fight Club put on an event between Jake Paul and Ben Askren. We all know what happened in that one. Uh, Jake Paul ended up getting the first round KO. I was not impressed in any way by this entire event. I thought that <laughs> it was pretty garbage, man. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I had uh, the UFC on my TV and I was watching Triller on my phone. It was just ridiculous. The event that they put on was insane. They had performing for a solid hour and a half. Like People who were not even really relevant to the music game right now were on there. Not that I don't like these guys, but dude, I'm tuning in to watch fights. I want to see fighting. That event was dragged out. The fights were okay at the best. Uh, I got to give a uh, credit to Cunningham and Frank Mir because they put, actually probably had one of the better boxing matches out of the whole fight. The co-main event was insane. Like, that's one thing I'll never understand is uh, the, he barely gets hit with, like, a body shot. They're saying it was a low blow. I don't know what happened with that. All I know is the dude was laying on the ground in pain and had to be taken out on the stretcher. And clearly in the replay, it looked like he wasn't even hit. So I don't know what the hell was going on with that. And then for the main event, right before that started, Justin Bieber comes on and performs for, like, a solid 15 minutes. Just the, literally the most sad breakup songs you could hear. And... I'm thinking, how in any way is any fighter besides Jake Paul getting motivated by this right now while he's stretching out on his homie's legs listening to some Justin Bieber? I'm sure he was getting fired up off of that. But Ben Askren probably went to sleep and had to take a nap because he was, it was so ridiculous. Like, it, it was too drawn out. I would like to see more of just fighting. I think it's a little bit ridiculous when they have so many performances going on in between fightings with the terrible, terrible commentary that they had. Like, any real fight fan who watches that shit and thinks that that is, like, you know, a good event is ridiculous. No offense to Snoop Dogg, and he is a legend, but, dude, you do not belong calling fights. It's just, I'm sick of hearing your voice at fights. It's terrible. Pete Davidson has no idea what's going on. And, yeah, the, re the other two guys were okay, but, dude, it's just horrible. Then they give Oscar De La Hoya a headset. It was insane, because the guy clearly was on some sort of stimulant drugs. And he was just yelling at Frank Mir to take out the USSA. Like, and I was like, they're both from the USA, I think. But anyway, I don't know. The event was terrible. The commentary was terrible. And I don't, I'm don't. i seeing on social media that people believe the event was rigged. I can't say for sure. All I know is Jake Paul got the win. He KO'd Ben Askren. When Ben Askren got up, it looked like he could have continued a little bit longer. Maybe we could have seen some action, but the ref decided to stop it. So it is what it is. Jake Paul lives to see another day as a, as a boxer. All right, guys, now time for the real stuff. This weekend, uh, April 24th, coming to you from the Viastar Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville, Florida. It's sold out. It's going to be a great event, first live event of the 2021 season. Let's get into it, man. We got three title fights. It's going to be freaking amazing. We got Valentina Shevchenko versus Jessica Andrade. We got uh, Zhang Wei Li versus Rose Nama Nunez. That's going to be a freaking war. And then we got a Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Mazadal. That's going to be a freaking war, too. Honestly, out of the three title fights, if I'm going to give my prediction and be completely real about it, I think the Valentina Shevchenko and the Jessica Andrade fight, that's going to be just a complete domination by Shevchenko. I really don't see Andrade having any way of winning that fight. Judging off of the way she lost to Wei Li, and I think Wei Li and Shevchenko fight kind of similar, a little bit different, but they, they go hard and they hit hard. I don't think she's going to be able to handle the pressure and the technicality of Shevchenko. I think Shevchenko is going to pick her apart. I don't think Andrade is going to be able to grapple with her or get in for takedowns. I don't think she's going to be able to find her range. I'm looking at basically a first round KO for this fight. I think I'm that confident in Shevchenko's abilities. And I, and I think the wars with Amanda Nunez and all the tough competition that she's faced up until this point is going to put her on the next level. Yeah, I understand, you know, Andrade does have the ability to win, and she is she can win by submission and KO. But in this fight, I don't I think her height disadvantage, her reach, and all that, I think that's gonna all play a big factor. You gotta remember, when she was fighting uh Thug Rose, Rose was 
beating her ass before she got dumped on her head. In my eyes, she was completely dominating that fight. It was a it was a good technical striking display from Rose. She messed up and kept going for a standing Kimura, and then she got slammed on her head. You know, things like that happen. I don't think Shevchenko is going to make any mistakes in this fight. I think her win streak, the where she's at mentally, she's completely dominant in that weight class. I think she is going to absolutely put on a, a killer first round performance. I don't see this fight going past two rounds. If I'm putting cash versus trash, we're definitely taking Andrade. Dribble, dribble, Kobe. Yeah, she's in the trash. I'm taking all of my money and I would put it on Shevchenko in this fight. Shevchenko is going to absolutely destroy her. As the my friend told me in, uh, on Instagram, she's going to mop the floor with that girl's face. And I totally believe it. I think that is going to be an absolute domination. Fight number two on this killer fight card. We got Wei Li versus Thug Rose. This fight, guys, I think is probably going to be fight of the year. I really don't see this fight not living up to expectations. I really see these ladies going out there, throwing bombs, giving it their all. The way these ladies fight is insane. Wei Li, you know, significant strikes landed per minute. She throws bombs. She has 6.3. I think that's the highest in the, like one of the higher ones in the UFC period. Whereas Rose is, you know, she's landing 4.1, which is not too bad. Percentage, 45% for Wei Li to 40% for Thug Rose. But absorb, you know, Thug Rose takes a lot of damage. And if Wei Li's throwing a lot of heat, that's not going to be good for Rose. They're throwing technical exchanges and Wei Li is winning every single one of those like she did against Ioana. I, I don't see this going good for Rose in the long run. I think Rose can handle getting hit, but she's not going to win on the feet. Where I think she's going to win is on the ground. Although, uh, Wei Li has a 100% takedown defense, which means she doesn't get taken down. It's going to be rough. What Rose needs to do is get close, land some shots in these exchanges, try to earn a respect on the feet, and then she needs to go for a takedown. Get this girl to the mat and just try and submit her. She needs to just drag this chick to the ground any way possible, constantly make it a grappling match, constantly grind her out, and then I think Rose would be able to dominate if that was to happen. This, regardless, to me, I think this has the ability to be fight of the year. Wei Li never lets down. The chick is a freaking hammer. She, she works extremely hard. She strikes amazing. She's well-rounded. She's hard to take down. Oh, man, it's so hard to decide on this one. But if I go cash versus trash, you know, I think if it goes five rounds, Wei Li is going to win the fight. I do. I think Wei Li is going to end up dominating this fight the later it goes. I think Rose's best chance to get this fight is to earn her respect right away on the feet in the first round and make it a clinch war. Make this girl uncomfortable as possible. She needs to get in there, get dirty boxing, get dirty in the clinch. You know, if just take her to the ground by any way possible and make it just a jiu-jitsu war. If Rose can do that, she might dominate the fight on the ground. I don't know, it's hard to say, but it's a really close one. But if I'm putting cash versus trash, Oh man, you know, we're throwing Nama Nunez in the trash in this one. We're definitely putting our money on Wei Li. Wei Li's proved time and time again how tough and durable she is. When she won the title, it was 42 seconds, just absolute destruction. When she fought Ioana, she beat her forehead until it swole up like a hot air balloon. The girl hits hard. She doesn't mess around in the ring. And she's very technical. Even though the pace is extremely high, she's very technical. So that's where I'm going to put my money. I think Wei Li is going to win. By a five round decision it could be split could be unanimous i don't know all right and on to the main event we got kamaru usman versus jorge mazidal this one you know it's a rematch from not that long ago last time that these two uh, gentlemen fought jorge mazidal you know took the fight on six day notice absolutely insane for the kind of competitor he was going against made weight i think he drained his body a lot just going for the weight cut we don't know how serious the guy trained for that fight you know, I'm sure he was training regardless, but let's be real here. Six days is not a lot of time. And to go to decision against somebody like Kamaru Usman, not even taking that much damage, I think that's impressive. Looking at this fight, Kamaru Usman is basically on like a 12, 10 to 12 fight win streak. I, I'm not too sure. I'm pretty sure it's at least 12. This guy is tearing through dudes. He is a monster. But when it comes to Mazudal, I think... He was right. If he had the full training camp, I think it's going to be a different story. And I think he's right. 
I'm not saying it's going to be an easy fight. Kamaru Usman, you know, he's a tough guy and his wrestling is outstanding. I think the perfect kind of guy to counter that with is a nasty striker who can grapple. And I think Mazadal is that guy. Now, that he's had a full training camp, I think that's going to play a factor into this fight. Because you got to look at the stats, man. These guys are pretty even across the board. You know, 5%. Sub, 6% sub for Mazadal, 47% kills, 46% for Mazadal. You know, they land about the same significant strikes per minute. You know, their takedowns, obviously that's going to be an advantage for Usman. He likes to wrestle a lot more than Mazadal. Mazadal, you know, he doesn't really like to wrestle. He likes to use his grappling to get back to his feet. The guy hits hard. He has a lot of knockouts. He has very underrated defense. He's great at blocking in the pocket. A lot of punches don't touch him. When he's smiling, it's because he really didn't get hit. If you go back and watch his fights in slow motion, the guy really doesn't get hit when he's in these wild exchanges and he lands the heavier shots. That's a big reason for why he's getting these KOs. You know, you got to look deep into this kind of stuff. Kamaro hasn't had to make too many changes to his game because it works so well. You know, it's a lot like how Woodley was when he was the champion. He didn't really have to change too much because he was just so good at what he did until people figured him out. Then he became very beatable. I think if we're going cash versus trash in this one, we're taking Kamaru Usman. We gotta crumple his ass up and we're gonna throw him right in the trash can, buddy. Because honestly, I think Mazadal was right. He needed a full training camp. He really just used all of his energy to cut weight. I don't know if he was replenished enough for the second fight, I mean, for the first fight, but the second fight, this dude is going to freaking come in bringing bombs. I think he's going to be grappling really well. I, the, I don't know if he can go for submissions, but I would like to see him attempt them on Usman to make him really regret taking him down. I want to. I, I think it's going to be a war, but I think uh, Usman's going to lose the exchanges. I think he's going to lose confidence right away. You got to remember, he just got dropped by Gilbert Burns. So that tells me that there is holes in his game in the stand-up. He ended up coming back using a nasty jab, which set him up for success in the end in that fight. But against Mazadal, I don't think you're going to have the same success. I don't think one slick jab is going to be able to just put you on a path of destruction against somebody like Mazadal, who when you throw one, he throws three or four. And the guy mixes in kicks to what he's doing. So just striking versus uh, striking, Usman is not on the same level as a Mazadal. Mazadal is definitely tiers above him as far as defense and technicality goes and toughness. I think if they're standing trading in the pocket, Usman will get dropped over the over a long period of time. I'm not saying that, you know, Mazadal is just going to run right through him. I think that if Usman lands, it could be dangerous too. Now, the aspect that I really want to see is when Usman's going for these takedowns this time around. Now, Mazadal had the excuse of only taking the fight on six day notice, so he, you know, we we wanted to see a main event. We wanted to see them fight, right? But he was very drained, and I don't know if he used all his energies stuff in those takedowns if he's able to just stuff the takedowns this time around it'll be a lot more interesting if he can just stuff them get off the cage and get back to the center of the ring i do not see this going good for usman if usman can make this a wrestling match and consistently take him down like he did the first time or you know get close to it or just put the pressure on so he looks like he's winning i think it might go in favor of usman but cash versus trash you know money on the line situation i'm putting my money on hori mazadal with a fourth round tko I don't see this going to decision either way. I think that both of these guys are going to go for the finish because Usman likes to fight dirty. You know, he likes to mix it up. He does throw bombs. So that and Mazadal's style of aggression is going to be a nasty combination for a finish. I do see that uh, both guys swinging hard in the first round. I think that Mazadal's going to catch him early and often. I don't think Usman's going to be able to take him down. I think Mazadal's going to be a lot stronger this fight than he was the first time around. So if you had to put your money on this one, I would, put your, I would take my money and I would put it on Mazadal because I think that he has the better ability to win this fight. I think with a full training camp, his cardio is going to be better. His technique is going to be better. He's going to be a lot harder to touch and take down. And he's already fought Usman, so you have to understand that plays into his mind preparing for this fight. Now he's getting ready for somebody he already knows and he's going to feel even more comfortable going in there. He's going to be more reckless. Uh, he's going to throw a more reckless abandon. You know, he's going to try and hurt this guy even worse off the bat. So I do see this playing into Mazadal's hands. Once again, you heard it here from Mad Maddie first. Thanks for tuning in to episode seven of Mad Maddie Fight Talk. If you like this video, you know, hit me with the like and subscribe. Uh, hit me in the comments. 
if you disagree or if you agree, I don't know. Let's talk story. But yeah, check me out. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, this talk of shit. Yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club dripping like I'm fresh paint. I can see through the facade like an x-ray.